No, intros are so awkward. <laughs> Um, I actually, uh, for my new story, one of the villains, I actually um, took one of my best friends. He's one of the nicest guys I know. Um, and I basically turned him into the villain of the story because I made the villain so like, he kind of looked like a door-to-door -door salesman. He was so nice. He's uh, charming. And I'm like, cool, I'm just going to make that my buddy. Take his entire appearance, turn it into the character. And I was like, by the way, dude, I, I want you to know I turned into the villain of my story. He's like, neat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this was like the ultimate uh comic writer's revenge yeah yeah well, that's why i actually that, that's one of the reasons i like writing because like don't actually get angry and like go murder somebody just write yeah. about it yeah. <laughs> so there's evidence mentioned. yeah <laughs> so you mentioned this because uh i heard a story with uh, peter david who wrote the incredible hulk for a number of years and he was going through a terrible divorce at the time. And Bruce Banner and uh, Betty Royce had gotten married. And someone suggests to him, you know, if, as, a, as therapy, why did you kill Betty off? He's like, really? You won't, you think I should kill Betty off as a payback for me going through my divorce? Yeah. That's a perfect idea. He kills a Betty Ross, and you know, a lot of people were upset with him, obviously. Yeah. But well, you know, that, that just shows you how real life actually does affect your work. Yeah. Reminds me of uh, the story with uh, Star Girl, though. Apparently, she's based off of the creator's um, sister when they were young. I didn't know that. <coughs> yeah like uh, apparently I, I can't remember fully if she was deceased or not but it is based on his uh, the character itself is based on his, her his sister <coughs> which you know which made watching the Stargirl show even better which by the way did you guys watch that the, the new Stargirl show from I haven't uh, watched last C summer? I haven't watched CW since um, Arrow ended oh uh, god yeah. I no, but, uh, it's solid though. You should give a uh, Star Girl a shot. I haven't even watched. Like I, I have to catch up on Supernatural too because I, I forgot what season I ended watching that on because my girlfriend definitely won't watch that. Like, she yo, dude, she Supernatural just went so freaking weird at the end. Okay, <laughs> the the final boss of Supernatural is God. But oh yeah, I did hear something about that. But yeah, wow, okay. That's... Okay, but I just find that like the okay, we're doing demons, monsters, we're fighting them. Your final battle is with God. Uh, spoilers, every everybody. Yeah. <laughs> for a show that ran for like fifteen goddamn years, like honestly, like the fourth season, if they ended it there, would have been so good because Supernatural just went down this ridiculous back and forth of like. Oh, one brother is in trouble and he's hiding it from the other one. The other one is fighting with him to learn. And then that one brother dies. And then next season, that one brother comes back. And now he is going through something and hiding it from the other brother. Who they, And then they fight. And then yeah. he dies. And then the other brother. <laughs> it's just a god dang repeating cycle. And when they run out of that, then it's like, now it's Cass who has the problem. Because he is now the third brother. Yeah. Once again, very sorry for the spoilers, but you know, you should have watched the show. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. My like favorite season, I think, is their actual last season. I think it was supposed to be the last season, and then they just kept four. going. Four? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I like four or five. The one with the um purgatory. The purgatory yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh no, that was like five or six. Yeah. So the one with the one dude, I think his name was like Dick. And he's like the president of some company or something. Uh, yeah. He's an asshole. That, that's oh, it's funny. His name's Dick. So uh, <laughs> like that was the last season of like I was like really invested into it. But like I watched up to like ten or eleven or something. So I have a couple seasons I still have to watch. Yeah. I don't know. I, I got up to the two hundred episode, and then I took a break, and then I just kind of watched the last season. Yeah. I feel like. The problem with Supernatural is that they change writers every so often. 
and then the writers don't like what was before, so they kill off a lot of the characters that were in previous seasons because they don't want to use them, or they just, oh, cool, I'm not attached to this character, so I'll kill them off for cheap drama. And then the new writers come in, and they do the same, do it back and forth and back and forth because there's kind of like this weird, weird rivalry between the staff. Yeah, that's... they have characters like I remember the kid who was the the prophet there, and he's like, "Hey, when am I coming back?" <laughs> like, actually went to the panel and he asked him, "Like, dude, when am I? When's my character coming back?" <laughs> <clears throat> and now there's gonna be a Walker Texas Ranger show with. <laughs> I I saw the pilot, and I have to tell you, I was not impressed. Oh. I really wasn't. It's not Chuck Norris. It was very slow and. Just didn't hit it for me. Uh, people said WandaVision was slow, and I don't think it was slow. I, I liked all of it. No, no. WandaVision is a slow burn because it's starting off, and you don't really know what's going on until episode four. Yeah, I, I still liked back, all of it. Oh, God, yeah. But I would actually... I'm the guy who wants who wanted more sitcom episodes. Okay? Yeah, I want yeah. Like, I, I like all of those old-type shows like uh, Dick Van Dyke and... Uh, yeah. Stuff like that. Like I used to watch when I was a kid. I mostly just not like I'm from like the 20s or whatever, or you know that's not when TV was around. But like the 50s, <laughs> I'm not from the 50s. I'm not like a time traveler. But I actually like TV Land stuff um, more. Like when TV Land was an actual channel that played like old stuff, like Leave It to Be There uh, and other things like that. Yeah, when I was a kid, um, I-, I was watching like shows on like uh, Fox. We would get it back in the day. And they would play uh, I Dream of Genie, uh, Bewitched. They would just play them every day on syndication. Like they would be playing them every day for like years. And I'm just like, oh, cool. I love this. I was watching the Flintstones. I was watching those really old sitcoms. And I just love Batman them. from like the 60s. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I watched that because it played right before Power Rangers. So I'd watch Batman and Power Rangers would come on. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like I love that old style of TV. Like I love those old sitcoms. So like, oh cool, I really love these first episodes of WandaVision. They're really fun. Uh, I would have loved more of it, yeah. but it got good. You know, was, obviously I love all the stuff that was coming on later. I'm like, oh cool, we got Darcy from like Two Broke Girls, and we got the the other guy uh, from um, what's it, what's it, uh, Fresh Off the Boat. I'm like, oh cool, are they gonna join the sitcom cast because they they have so much experience on sitcoms. And the uh, lady that plays Kitty from that '70s show, she was she's in like some of it, and I'm just yeah. like, that's awesome. That I love awesome. I love how they did that. Uh, I I'm, I thought they were gonna do like a that '70s show like thing, yeah. and that I was would, like, that would have been like, sick because they could have done the circle, but you know, it's Disney, so I, I highly doubt they would have done that. Yes. <laughs> and then you can't have a Hyde character anymore because you know he did bad stuff. So yeah. But I remember, um, what was it there? Because uh, they, they interviewed her uh, and like, oh, cool. Yeah, I just like loved being on that. Like she said, she was like, it was like a lot of her, it felt so old school, like when she did things because the first episodes apparently had a live studio audience and everything. Yeah, yeah they did. That's awesome. And she's like, yeah, it's just like, oh, cool. Like, I just felt like so old around all these kids, but they just like went, uh, fell right into it and everything. It was like really fun uh, hearing her go on about that. Yeah, you know that Dick Van Dyke was actually um, a consultant. They actually hired yeah. him as a consultant. And he, and he was like, I had no idea that Marvel was this popular. <laughs> <laughs> it's only uh, the biggest film yeah. franchise of all time. Yeah. I would say, I would start talking about the Snyder Cut, but we don't have enough time. Yeah. And oh, I don't know if everybody has seen it yet. So. Uh, I haven't seen it. I'm seeing it tonight, but I I watched it yesterday. I got reviews about it though. I I watched it at work because I don't do anything at work. So I watched it at work. Um, and uh, it, it's long, but it it I didn't care that it was like four hours. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Snyder Cut next time and everything. Yeah, but honestly, until, until other people start showing up, I think we're good for just going as long as we want. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, uh, actually, speaking of things I started watching, um, have any, has anyone seen Preacher? No. No. That's actually, that's also my book. And I'm like, I'll start, I watched the first season. I'm like, hmm. Didn't? This is good yeah. Doesn't it Seth Rogen direct oh, that or Preacher. something? Yes. Uh, yeah, I saw the first season as well. Okay. Here's the thing, though. 
Seth Rogen's not bad as a director. Like, I watched it and it didn't feel like any of his stupid. Oh, I like Seth Rogen in general. Like, I know his laugh is kind of, like, annoying, but I, I just watched a movie, like, the other day. Like, not the first time, but I've watched it before. It's called 50-50, and it's about um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and he has, like, cancer. And yeah. he's Seth Rogen's friend, and Seth Rogen, he's good. Oh, okay, bye, Luke. So, uh, um his internet's like crap so um and uh i like that movie and i i like most movies that seth rogan is in i don't really i don't criticize certain people because it just i think seth rogan i think of uh that food fight movie that came out not long sausage party there you go sausage party because the ending (laughs) that that was weird that was just weird what one peak Seth Rogen is right there. I remember the movie theater was just dying laughing. Like, because it just went like a whole like 180. And we're like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> yeah. I remember that was the, at the end, end of the movie, there's like, yes, in reality, you are being controlled by a man named Seth Rogen. And if you see a stupid face show up in the smoke, cool, we're going to go kill Seth Rogen. <laughs> That's the ending of food of uh, sausage party. After the ending, everyone remembers. Yeah, <laughs> I like how um, he has like all of his friends, kind of like Adam Sandler does. He has like all his friends in his movies. Uh, Seth Rogen kind of does that. Like knocked up, he has the Canadian dude. I can't, I don't know his name, but he's uh, in like the guy, played, uh, the guy who played Hiccup in uh, yeah. 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 Um, and, um, do you remember the movie, this is the end? Yep. That's actually one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. Like comedies. Yeah. It's just them playing themselves at the rapture and just like, yeah, (laughs) except I, I like Michael Sarah in that movie because I highly doubt he's like that in real life. Um, (laughs) he's so like, (laughs) you want some of the Capri (laughs) Sun? That's right. That's right, bitch. (laughs) Are you doing coke? Yeah, yeah. You want to try some? No. <laughs> uh, that entire movie was great, and then yeah, like just being the biggest like passive aggressive bastard ever. Yeah. And I remember they were like, I can't remember. I think it was on the roast of uh, Seth, uh, Seth Rogen, where they joke like, yeah, uh, uh, Jonah Hill requested they bring the biggest blackest dildo they could for that scene where he gets raped by a demon. Uh, sorry somebody's messaging um yeah (laughs) and like the amount of people they like killed like of celebrities at that party is just hilarious (laughs) i'm just like trying to think of it like how do they get all these guys hey guys you want to pretend to be at a party and just like fuck shit up i was actually thinking when i first watched it i was like oh kevin hart's gonna be like part of an actual cast because they're not gonna kill him oh he does (laughs) I just love it at the end of the movie where that, that one guy who like left is not like the other guy from 21 Jump Street in the Gibbs suit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those are some of my mo- the movies that I really like. Uh, 21st Jump Street is one of the first movies I actually bought popcorn for and I didn't eat any popcorn because I was that invested in the movie that I was like, oh, I forgot there was popcorn in my lap. <laughs> I was just laughing that much. Well, because it was like joke after joke, and also so it's very well written. Yeah, yeah. I like I like both, and yeah. that, then I like the ending when they were like uh, mocking, like they were going to do like twenty three Jump Street and <laughs> all the other ones. Oh yeah, uh, twenty one Jump Street and the Men in Black, or yeah. twenty one Jump Street in Space. But like they kind of called it with how Hollywood does sequels. Yeah, and then they're like uh, just like Fast and the Furious. I'm sorry if anybody watches this and or listens to this and they, they really like Fast and Furious, but I think it's complete garbage after <laughs> um I, well I've start I started watching the series at like five. I like five because I like bank jobs. Like I probably I'm not like a crime writer type person, but I would probably write like a bank job type like c- comic, maybe just because I like that. I like that kind of like heist kind of thing. Um, but now on they... the opposite, yeah, on the opposite hand, I would write uh, instead of a bank heist, it's just 
quite a digital bank heist because like I remember like somebody actually pointed that out like you know showed like why bother robbing a bank anymore? That's not where they keep the money anyways. Yeah, yeah. And uh, since I know people that work at uh, like banks, I know how much money is like in a safe. And I'm like, oh, it's not even like, it's it's a lot to like most people. Like I don't have $100,000 just floating around, but <laughs> if I did, I wouldn't be doing this right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like usually banks keep their money elsewhere. They'll keep them a yeah. lot of time to get secure holdings or usually what happens a lot of the time is that they'll come pick up the money from the bank to bring it to a more secure location and the bank will probably have like what 100,000 to 200,000 bucks in yeah there at least. um and then that reminds me of that movie masterminds i don't know if you ever saw that with zach galifianakis that's an actual real thing that did happen um there was a person that worked at brinks brinks or uh one of the other like armored truck things and they like stole money from the armored truck. Uh, I think the armored truck or like the arm, like the actual building. But yeah. yeah. You know, that's the thing though, is that a lot of those uh, movies, they don't do armored trucks correctly. I've actually seen armored trucks because, you know, uh, well, both me and Greg, we, we work with uh, security. So like I've seen the armored trucks that come in. And the thing is, you need like three to four people to actually operate and open it. So you need one person in the back to open the door for the next person to the door for the person behind the driver. And that person opens the door for the driver. So you yeah. can't actually get in there without like a team of people operating. it. So like all those movies, like, Oh, cool. We're just going to like blow the truck out. And... <clears throat> That's the thing though. The bank heist is such a stereotype for writing. Yeah. It's such a stereotype for the robbers. It's such a stereotype for this. It just, it doesn't hold water in current society. I like the Italian job because that, which is like one of my favorite movies because of bank like heist and all the, well, it's not bank heist, but it was like a heist type thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Ian's like, no, I hate that movie. Mark Wahlberg. No, 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 no. I, lo- I love both versions. I love the original. I love the remake. I didn't it- know there was a original. Oh my God. It's with Michael Did- Caine. You could look it up. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, wow. It has a surprise in there, which I'm not going to say, but I would look it up. It's like 1968, 69. So look it up. Oh, I just finished the show that uh, my friend Ryan wanted me to watch like years ago. And uh, yeah, it's on HBO Max. So I got to watch it at work because, again, I don't do anything at work. Um, and it's called Banshee, Banshee, Pennsylvania. Um, the show is so amazing. <laughs> Like the action in it make like that's why I, I like watching some things and actually Dylan tells me to watch certain things to um like kind of research for writing. So he's actually, oh, you should actually watch Criminal Minds because like serial killers and stuff. And I have a serial killer character. Um and I was like, oh, okay. Well, I already watched like a bunch of other serial killer stuff. So I've seen every Ted Bundy thing <laughs> that's ever been made. And like, even when I watch something that I think is new, like first I thought it was new. It's just the same source material stuff from the other stuff like they've already talked about. Um, And there's like uh, Jeffrey Dahmer and stuff like that. The only thing I just watched on Amazon that was about serial killers that um, I didn't know was they go back in time to like the 1800s or some shit. It, like uh the guy in chicago h.h H. holmes didn't didn't know who that was oh god Did- I, I i didn't know uh that person existed um and then like there like i knew about the building because of hector like he told me about he lives in chicago um and uh then there's this other guy this like old guy it's fucking weird um albert fish I'm not going to say what he did. He, he's a cannibal. So so he ate, like, children. I'm not going to say what he ate, but it was disgusting. Yeah. And then there's this lady that um, fed people to her pigs or something. And I was like, oh, that's, like, been done in, like, movies and stuff. So I was like, oh, I wonder if they got that idea from her. I'm very sorry for the view- viewers of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> We, t- uh, we jump from you know, superheroes and writing to serial killers. Yeah. But to be fair, like, you know, this is all for research. Please note this. Yeah. It's like, 
I was actually like, my dad's like, why are you researching so much stuff about demons? I'm like, it's research for a story. And you see all the pentagrams in the room. <laughs> no, no, no. But I actually, like, I've been researching that a lot recently, demonology, religion, and all that, just the stories I'm writing. And it's just, it's also fascinating. Like, it's ridiculous how, where this research can take you. And especially when you like, if anyone walks in on you, like in the middle of a like a long, like here, there's the origin of Balthazar. Here's the origin. I'm like, why are you looking up all this shit? Yeah, like anytime, like my mom does not like horror movies or anything. So when, when we uh, had the Chronicles of Horror on Kickstarter last year, I was like, uh, she had to get like a new furnace or something. But I was like, I know you don't have money, but I do have a horror comic that's on Kickstarter right now. Yeah, I, I don't have any part in it. I just have people that like are my friends and like creators on my platform. She's like, oh, I was like, yeah, it's like horror. And she's like, yeah. And then I started talking about like, oh, I have like a story that's going to be the next one. And it's kind of like a serial killer. And she just looked at me really weird because <laughs> when I start talking about like serial killer stuff, she's just like, why, why do you like that i just think it's interesting speaking of horror stuff has anyone seen the the netflix horror movie uh the babysitter yep wait is that the one what's like they sacrifice somebody or something yeah like yeah. they're trying to kill this kid and get his blood and all that yeah uh, yeah I, I, I managed to watch both of them I, I, I haven't seen the second one but i really like them because i usually i can't do horror movies because like that that should just terrifies me in the middle of the night but like it's a comedy horror movie and it's just like oh this is really fun and like i yeah. watched a sequel recently it just it's so good i just watched well, i didn't just watch it like in october i watched um one of my friends was like were like uh oh you should watch this movie because i've never watched that series before i watched the first insidious uh, I've watched so many horror movies. That is the first one that I watched, besides The Exorcist, that actually is scary in a way. There's this, it's always like a demon thing. So there's, um, in The Exorcist, the only thing that's scary to me, because everything else in that entire movie, I think is hilarious. Just like how the, how the girl, is, she, she's like possessed. And that's not that fucking that's 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 messed up but like how she's like swearing and stuff and she's like 10 years old she's like yeah fuck you nah. but and like the whole <laughs> and the whole like throwing up thing and the 360 head spin thing yeah that that's was... that's i think that's hilarious um yeah. even the crawling on the wall but um in insidious the like the character the demon thing that's just weird so like I actually had that like pop in my mind when I was walking around uh, at work and like I'm going into uh, one of these closets and I'm like scanning in and going into the closet and it like before the light turns on in there there's a little like a, a moment like a second of like just darkness and I like I saw it like real quick and I'm like fuck because <laughs> that's what it did when I watched The Exorcist um, like years ago for the first time I uh I saw that like demon thing pop up. So when, you know, when you open a fridge and um, it's like still dark and then the light comes on when the fridge opens, yeah. I saw that demon face. Like as I was opening the fridge, I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember I saw that on the um, moment screen once um, where I had the director and some of the cast members there. It was the first time, I, for my first time watching it, I'm like, whoa, this is freaky. <laughs> Yeah. Then the director is talking about, yeah, this is actually based on actual case. So this actually happened. Yeah, I watched The Conjuring because somebody, when I lived in Florida, um, I hate Florida. So when I lived in Florida, <laughs> no, um, not just on the podcast, it's Florida stories. Sorry, I could. Sorry. I'm, I'm still writing that book, but I had to stop because I have to um, read this book first so I don't copy him. And, um, and uh, I have like a whole section in that book that I'm writing. And it's just about like Florida and my hatred for Venice, Florida. 
<laughs> just like the whole experience the like three months that i was there that it was so terrible oh uh, but uh oh poor baby oh. listen mr <laughs> chicago montreal for the win montreal. we you had the, we had luke in here but i think his like internet died or battery got bored but yeah no, but I loved him. Like he was like doing, uh, he was sharing his uh, drawing. That was great. Yeah, I haven't heard from him in like months, and then he just uh, pops out of nowhere, and he's like, "Oh yeah, when are you doing the meeting?" It's like, uh, uh, "Oh yeah, like right now." He's like, "Oh okay." <laughs> like just because you're not uh, posting doesn't mean you're not lurking. Yeah, true. The internet is the only place you can use that term and not sound creepy. Like, oh yeah, I'm just lurking on the boards, you know, like just read shit, but I don't like post. All right, so I think that's going to call it to uh, wrap it up for the, the podcast. Yeah, 